good evening. Welcome to Rugby Ames Mad Monday. Coming out live from All Star FM from the brand new studio. And we're talking about 1%ers, Keith. I don't know. I wanna, can you spot what's different tonight, Keith? Spot the difference. We haven't got Brother Jones here. That's a big difference. Yes, I'm a black man alone tonight in the studio. Um, I'm, I, feel, I feel like a lonesome black man. But no, another difference. Can, it's right in front of your face. What Can you spot the difference? Uh, I can't see anything else that's any different. <laughs> 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 the viewers will be able to see something different. Josh, you know the difference that is straight away. I've noticed on the videos that we're struggling to see your beautiful face because of the big pop shields. So I've invested in little afros this week for the mics so we can see each other's faces. See, that, that's a bit of a blessing in disguise, though, because when you've got me and Jonesy sat behind the camera, it's better that you don't see our faces. Especially with Jonesy, because he's not the best of looking lads, is he? He's not. Austin got all the looks, didn't he? We don't tell him that, though. <laughs> Austin, Austin got all the looks in the Buchanan family. All, f- all 12 others got, got shared the looks apart yeah, from well, Jones. Yeah, jo- well, a good sort as well, you know he what I mean? Yes. Jody's a great sort. Definitely. He, is it, he got the most of it all. Scott's not a bad sort. It's just Jonesy. <laughs> and his dad. <laughs> Big Gerb. <laughs> <laughs> Al, Al Gerbs produced such fine young fledgling. I'll he never has know. produced some athletes, are not he? You've got to say that he has produced some I, very, very good athletes. I've worked with I've worked with Gerbs for years, right on the door, and I never even knew it with Jones, uh, Jonesy's dad and Austin's dad till it took one day. I walked into Soul Circus with uh, Austin, a bit worse for wear, and he went, "All right, Dad." I went, you know, I'm thinking I'm a bit. I'll fly an eye. I just thought to myself, I thought, is it did he just call him dad? And I went, is that your dad? And, it's been like that. And yeah, I'm like, wow. Big Gerb. And he's just, he's not an athlete at all, Gerbs. In any way, shape or form, but. I it's, wouldn't know. He's fledgling. Know. I, look, mate, I'll tell you what, in 100 metres, I think I beat him twice. And that's how much of an athlete he is. It's poor form like that, isn't it? It's poor form, mate. I think I beat you nowadays, though. I don't. Uh, do you want to race after the show? <laughs> if you want, yeah. Right, what's been happening in the world of Keefe Senior? Squeef. Not much. It's been quiet for me this week. Uh, you no, haven't run anywhere for I've, charity. I've had no charity exploits, <laughs> so I've had a quiet weekend. Uh, Saturday, I did absolutely. I did the game review Saturday. I did some game reviews on Saturday, and obviously the Sheffield game on Sunday. Bad result for Sheffield. Very bad result. Flying high half time, twenty two ten at half time. We were running away with it, and then they just shut up shop. Uh, and they couldn't do anything about Feverson's enthusiasm. So, very disappointing performance. Terrible for result for... Yeah, mate. Worse, I was on the way to Halifax, yeah. <laughs> Even worse result I was on, I was on the way to Halifax for a free dinner, looking forward to catching up with everyone at Halifax. I hadn't seen him for weeks since I've been locked in this bloody studio. And um, I got the phone call. Ty couldn't do the Bradford game because he, he couldn't find anyone for tribe of kids that he's got. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, no one's looked after the kids. So, I went along and did the match. It turned out to be an absolute nightmare. <laughs> the worst decision you ever made. Worst you decision carried on that I've ever to made, box. ever. <laughs> I, know I told you it would come to bite you in the backside, didn't I? I knew one day, like, I've, I've had nothing, for my whole Twitter career, I've had nothing but love. Today, the keyboard warriors, the hot pot munchers have been out in force. Welcome to mine and Danny Kerman's world. <laughs> I tell you what, it... <laughs> You know what? I'm, I've been seen up today. I'm doing a big, big sorry. I'm so sorry tonight on tonight's show. Well, really, I'm not. I'm just going to say, get a life. <laughs> <laughs> get a life. I hope you're listening. See, so you've prepared this bit, this apology <laughs> yeah, yeah, all yeah. day, and now you're just going to scrap it, mate. I'm, 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 I'm prepared. I've told everyone I want to apologise, but I'm not. So if you can't take a bit of banter, get a life. End of. Do I care? Am I bothered? No, not in the slightest. I'm Alex Simmons. How are you doing? <laughs> Is that Alex Simmons DJ if you want to throw some abuse? Yeah, yeah, way? throw it my way. I'm also uh, called Legend. If you want to hashtag that Legend, <laughs> you can do if you want. Now, a bit of banter turned out badly for me at the Bradford game. Um, it was literally just lightening the mood. 44 nil down. Let me sit, let me paint the scene. Two great weeks, two great results. Few injuries this week, a lot of injuries. The squad were decimated. Playing Saints, who had a higher. Had all the team on, you know, Walsh, Roby, they, they had all the players pumping. The, the only player they didn't have was Kyle Moore, who were doing laps around the pitch on his mobility scooter, looking like a hobo with a Saints flag. But, uh, yeah, he, he wasn't playing, and uh, Flash Flanagan were too good looking. You know, it, it, were, it wasn't a great, greatest day. 
and he looked in the mirror and says, I'm too good looking to play tonight. So Flash didn't play. Uh, back from that, they had a full team out and uh, 44 nil down. So I just thought, I'll lighten the mood, Keith. The kids were crying in the stand, mate. It, it, it was that depressing, you know what I mean? There the were grey skies everywhere. So I just said, for banter purposes, it could be worse. We could all be from Lancashire. Even the Saints fans were laughing. Then a few of them, obviously, made a few little complaints. And, um, yeah. That's a problem, isn't it? It just takes one to complain and then it escalates. Yeah. I can't remember his name. I would, call, If I could remember his name, I'll call him out and I'll check him on Twitter. I'll call him out. <laughs> so there's one bell, one massive bell. So, so this me apology all has now turned from <laughs> a confrontation where we're going to be setting up a, a Twitter fight between I'm joking, Alex I'm joking. Simmons and some Saints I, I didn't fan. say, though, wouldn't it be funny for the halftime entertainment? I'll just get myself a ring inside a pitch and just let people come and fight me. I can honestly say that <laughs> this is the worst apology <laughs> I've ever heard in my life. I'm joking. I really, and I, Generally, I'm sorry, but... I am genuinely sorry if I've upset anyone. I never meant to. It was just a little bit of banter. You've got to think with 44 nil down, it's just a bit of banter. And anyway, St. Helens is in Merseyside, not in Lancashire. Is that right? Is it? I there you know. go, yeah. So, you know, we're poking fun at all the Manx, so they should be happy. Anyway, we're moving on with the show. Got two great guests tonight, Keefe. Are you excited for tonight's guests? One we know very well. One we don't know at all, but I've heard... <laughs> I've, I've heard great stories. Not many people do know him. No, no, no. <laughs> he, he, he's like, he's one, of, he's one of the guys, you know, like, it's like Kaiser Soze. He's like the Kaiser Soze of the rugby league world. He's like, like that, he was gone. He's just like, I, I've heard, I went to Bradford on Sunday. I said, oh, I've got this guy called Clog, Clogger coming on the show. And they're like, oh my God, he's ruthless. <laughs> Everyone kept saying, he's ruthless, he's ruthless, he's ruthless. So I'm proper excited because I hope he's more ruthless than me. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. Ty, you're missing it. You're missing your dog today. What? Where's your chew dog? He's, uh, he's putting a floor down at home or something. Well, you actually said he's made no contribution whatsoever to this week's show. No, I'm waiting for the news in brief to come through any minute now. <laughs> <laughs> standard, standard chew dog. So he definitely must have been busy today because that's it. That it does it on the day as well. I say, I, I say, is it his day off work? Why? He's been, he he's been managed to send uh, Facebook videos to everybody. I've had a few Facebook of videos what? of uh, rugby big shots and something about... Greg Inglis. Yes, and, and one about football. Uh, Is he sucking Greg Inglis again? He loves him, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. So he's, 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 he's had time to do that, but he's not had time to put some news together and some uh, topical information out there. So he has been busy doing something, but it's not been what he was supposed to be doing. I wonder what Tudor actually does during the day. It is interesting, isn't it? Uh, it? I bet it's really strange. I've got a friend, right, called Callum Brown, the bull, right? I can't tell you on air why we call him the bull, but it's a great story, which I will tell you all off there, right? But anyway, you know what he does on his day off, right? Swear to God, he works at Asda. No, is it Tesco? Tes he works at Tesco. He's one of the managers of Tesco, right? On his days off from work, he dresses in a full Elvis outfit, goes around the house singing songs, and he's got a little dog called Baxter, and he just sings to Baxter. <laughs> that is a true story. I reckon two dogs will be up there with the strangeness levels. She has got quite a few dogs as well, hasn't he? He's got two dogs, hasn't he? Yeah, loves it. Two dogs. Like two bobs, like Rob Roberts, but it's two dogs. Anyway, let's get our first uh, <laughs> let's get our first guest out tonight, the Bearded Wonder. You got a tune ready? I've got a tune ready. I'm doing the intro tonight in the absence of two dog. I wouldn't, I wouldn't Which intro. Will be interesting. <laughs> this will be really, really <laughs> personality driven. <laughs> Cheers, boys. Right then. Ladies and gentlemen, in the white corner, <laughs> hailing from Featherston, <laughs> weighing in at 100 kilos, he is a part time big issue seller and full time Wakefield Wildcat skipper. He is Captain Kermo, Danny Kermond. <laughs> 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 Come and sit with me, Kermo, come on. I'll lick your bum bum down, it's a great intro song for you. You didn't get that. <laughs> How are you doing, pal? Yeah, good, mate. Good. You need to get your mic your face right up to this mic, just like that. Can't let let the beard it. touch the, the afro. The beard's stick to the afro. That's it. What, what do you know? Not much, mate, really. It's been pretty quiet. Um, pretty, that, that must be quiet. In the, well, one thing, you, you did send me a picture of your dog. Oh. <laughs> spraying the wall yeah um, well what is uh, my missus's mum she's Japanese and they like to feed you loads like so when I go around it's always like a proper test like how much it can give me they go yeah no 
<laughs> Not all time. Also, <laughs> so <laughs> just wondered. She's, she's fed my dog loads and loads of food, and then does she does she go yeah. and Snapchat you, Mrs. Bull? No, she don't do Snapchat. Thank God for thank, that. Yeah, thank the oh, Lord. That. Thank the Lord. Did you see? It? Did, it, did the mum see it? Is it gone around her mum yet? No, they're, they're quite old, like in in the late sixties. So luckily, they're not on any form of social media. Like all she's got to do is Google it. That's it. <laughs> do you worry about it? Every my dad day? might be listening. Actually, I always listen to radio when I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> Mister, what's it? What's she called? Uh, Holroyd. Oh, Mister Holroyd. Yeah, Mister Holroyd. That's the right Japanese name. <laughs> <laughs> he's English. All oh, right, he's English. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that makes sense. <laughs> Mr. Alroy just Googled that it came on. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you'd be interested. Uh, That's what I'm saying. Hashtag yeah. wasn't me. <laughs> so go on. So, yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so she's fed dog loads anyway. She, why would she feed the dog? Because she, fe- she loves the dogs. I don't, I don't know why she's... Fe- she, <laughs> you've been coming out. So she's fed dog anyway. We'll go away Talking from... Go mind. away from her parent-in-laws. <laughs> and um, I get up uh, six o'clock last week. <coughs> comes down, I think, oh, it's a bad, bad smell out of the kitchen. And bearing in mind, dog's in a cage because she chews on a night, so... I looked at dog's cage and she'd splash part of <laughs> through the cage and onto the wall. It would have belt her as well, wouldn't it? Well, yeah. <laughs> we'll tweet the picture for the lads <laughs> off my phone. I'll tweet it um, at half time. But yeah, wakey. So it's been a tough start to the season. You're lucky. Bradford have had six points deducted. If they get them back, you could be in trouble. First of June, the big crunch derby at Oddsall. I'll be there giving you grief. Well, maybe I won't be there. Maybe I'll be just cheering you on. Don't know. But how's it going? Is the squad, is the squad gelling? So you've got some good players. Yeah, on got, paper. Yeah, we've got a great squad. Um, obviously, we brought people in a, a little bit later than we would have liked to. Um, not had as much pre-season. Those guys that have come in later, so it was always going to take a bit of time to build um, and to get playing our best footy really. And Why do you call it footy when you're in England? It's rugby league. Rugby. Mate. Playing our best rugby That's league right. football. Right. Good. There you go. Um, and uh, yeah, it's gradually getting a little bit better. We're still not playing at hundred percent, but we've picked two well, wins it, about it, the last two weeks. So. Well, yeah, great, great results, great comeback win last week against Widnes on the eye pitch. What were Mavers moaning about the eye pitch? Uh, it, it wasn't this time. No, he's on wing though. So he's he, he, wing. Yeah, is yeah. yeah. What, what's happening, out of the way he what's happening with Mavers, Keithy? You, you've played with Mavers before. Has he lost it? Is he finally over ill? He's getting old a bit now, isn't he? He's getting on a bit. What is he, 34? No, he's not mate. He's younger than me. He's 31. Is he? Is that all he is? 30, 31, yeah, Mav. He claims he's a fine wine anyway, so... Is he? He's going well on wine. He's a fine wine. Why, why, why is he on wing he, he says... Well, in. obviously we've brought, brought Jazz in and... Is Jazz at fullback? Yeah, he's playing fullback at Who's moment. playing six and seven? Um, Harry, Psyker and... Who? <laughs> Psyker and Sykes. So, so two Psykers. Yeah. yeah. Boom. Any good? Oh, what was Peter playing? Uh, <laughs> Peter Bread? Oh, he's been playing hooker. I thought you were on about Peter Fox then. Hey, where's Foxy playing? He's uh, Herbalife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's had a couple of weeks rest, so. Oh, resty. Mm. Ooh, rest the, or injured or. The dreaded resty. Yeah. <laughs> we're, not, we're, not, we're not picking you today, Foxy. I bet he's taken that bad on old Forrest Gump. Uh, he's been pretty, pretty good, to be fair. Yeah. Has he? He's. Uh, He's an experienced player, Fox, isn't he? So he's, he's been good around lads, really. And he always gives you that little laugh as well. Still one of the best stories ever on Rugby M is the Diodora sponsorship story. <laughs> Do you remember that? Do you remember that, Keithy? Yeah, yeah he, has done some, uh, he has done some funny things as uh, Peter Fox. I got him with a corker. Corker? I got him... He, he came in bragging. He had a he had his message. Well, she was sort of like his girlfriend at was the she time. she all right? And he was showing us... Uh, we were new pictures. Videos, no videos. He was showing us videos to all lads, and it's. I said to him, I said, Come "Oh, on, you mate. can't do that, you mate. You don't do that, not, not with not your missus. Miss, not with your oh, missus." No. So, but who'd, who'd send the picture of the missus around? He didn't, he didn't, who'd he didn't send it. We were on his phone. It were on his phone, and he was showing all lads. <laughs> uh, so we managed to get hold of his phone uh, oh, no. and emailed the video out to, Oosh, to quite good. a few people. No. So it ended up getting out then. It went the hard way, so I, I don't think he did that again uh, very very soon. Did, is she still with the girl? No, no, no. Do you know her name? No. Sounds like a keeper. Oh, a long time ago <laughs> with that. long time ago. 
Uh, when, we, we've got when, be, when are we young and daft? We've got to, well, he's still daft. Yeah. That's, that's, well, that's it. You, you don't get any better, do you, Camo? Well, no. Talking about Chew Dog, saying you'd like to watch Chew Dog at, at home on his day off. I would love to watch Foxy, Foxy at home yeah. on a Foxy day off. Cam. Yeah, that'd be we, awesome. We should just rig his house with like little cameras, just for crack and just watch it. I'd be, a, I'd be a dream. I used to hate training against him because he's that, he's that intense. That he'd, he'd just come in with elbows and knees and everybody would always get injured whenever you got involved with anything that he did. Did it still say? It's horrible. Yeah, one, one thing about Foxy, he'll give his best all the time. Like, he, even if it's, you know, uh, him and Ben Kakane used to have some right ding-dongs. Like, we used to do a bit of left v right and obviously they'd be opposite each yeah. other. And they used Business to get right partners as well. Yeah. I know, it's like, is his little is his little I can't say the word kind of female dog on there? Yeah, he's Benny's girl. <laughs> he's a little foxy. Un- you can't say that to him. In mate. the pyramid, you can't say yeah, that. He's to just him. below him in the pyramid, so he's making yeah, yeah, yeah. all the money. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> Apparently, he's doing big door though. Apparently, he's massive, on massive heard. door. We're gonna get credit a, to him. We're gonna get a professional's view on Herbalife <laughs> shortly. I'm sure. <laughs> Should we bring our next? Get, let's get. Kim, you you do the intro for us for our next. We got Clogger in oh, tonight. You sacked him already. No, 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 no. One intro. No, no. And we're gonna get him, him. To But I just want a bit of background from Kermo on the man we're gonna meet. Uh, well, yeah, I've brought a special guest along with me tonight. Um, I think if you've met coaching staff before, they're all a, a little bit different and a bit out there. And this guy. Is, He's got a few personalities, let's say that, and he's, <laughs> he's one of the driest guys that I've met. Um, Aussies, when they first come over, always struggle to get him. Um, I've seen him break a few a few players, um, and yeah, he's a he's a he's a good guy underneath it all. He doesn't smile too much, but it's Martin Claus in our conditioner. Right, we're gonna get him right in a second. We've just got to say a big hello right now to Adrian Moretta, who's listening. He's having terrible jet lag. He's a friend of mine. Came over to England last week, spent a couple of weeks with the Simmons at Simmons Towers. And um, yeah, Moretta, we we'll love you. I miss you. And um, keep it real, son. Got to keep it doing. You know you, what I mean? You look like you're welling up a little bit there. Mate, so. I'm, I'm genuinely, he's, he's coming at a really tough time of life, right? You should have some like some emotional music now, <laughs> tell you. Teed up. Yeah, you get the smallest violin out. <clears throat> no, I've, I've been doing it tough with, this, with the station. It's been, it's, been a, it's been a right journey recently. And he came in and I was like, he's just probably giving me some proper good advice, like a dad. Never had a dad, and it was like having a dad for for two weeks. He went around my house, he gave me a big list of jobs that he do in my house, like clean this door, fix this, fix that, fix that. I'm like, yeah, dad. And then he says, oh, well, you what you need to do is take all them pictures off Instagram of all girls, and get back with your missus. <laughs> so I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't go down well. <laughs> this girl, right? Um, <laughs> I took pictures down off Instagram of her, and. Uh, she phoned me and I, I, I had to fo- answer the phone. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm proper, that's I'm a bad proper pussy. Proper pussy yeah. I can't believe it. That's not swearing, that's not swearing. That's not swearing, is it? It's not, is it? Not. I'm a scaredy cat, yeah, I'm a proper scaredy cat. So I, I, I answered dead answer. I phone. expected better of you, Mr. I Simmons. know, mate, but I, I don't know what to say to her. What do I say? The way how you express your life all over the airwaves, week in, week out, and you just couldn't... Do, well, saying that, you told her many times, didn't you, over the internet, over, over the airwaves. Yeah, yeah, I, I rubbish my ex big time on radio, <laughs> and I've had to apologise for all that. I proper love her, though. I've written, it's, been, <laughs> it's been a right journey, but I've realised that I proper love her. You know what I mean? It's just a crossroads in life, Simo, isn't it? You know what I mean? <laughs> like you, snappy. <laughs> I'll get you. Life's there to test it, isn't it, Simo? What's that, mate? It's there to test you with sick life, isn't it? It is, mate. So you, you Says the man that rolls up in R8. You, you <laughs> <laughs> Better test your life. <laughs> I love you, Keith. <laughs> right, let's get our next guest out to you. Ladies and gentlemen, also in the white corner, also hailing from Featherstone, he's a former Bradford Northern player, a former bodybuilder, and now Wakefield strength and conditioning coach. He is Martin Clogger Clawson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're killing it today, Tyre. Yes, and eating an all side FM bit of class. Wait till we play Kermo's tune later on. <laughs> Clogger, when, when you're talking to the mic, mate, you got to get right up to it like this, like kiss it like you're kissing a fine lady. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Radio talk, works better yeah. if you talk. <laughs> talk, talk, talk loud, you got to talk loud into it. Okay, fire away. How are we doing, mate? You all right? Champion, yeah. We're winners are grinners. Winners are grinners, eh? Two wins on trot. Yeah. How, how, was, how was life at Wakefield? Uh, really good. Uh, good bunch of lads. See, I'm 
got a miserable persona, I believe. <laughs> but when you've got 30 kids to look after every single day, <laughs> you'll be miserable, Kermar, won't you? Well, yeah, true. As a strength and conditioning coach, is Foxy not a dream player for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a dream and a nightmare all in one. He's a, Yeah, he's a top trainer. Uh, I wish all of them were like it. You wish everyone would like Foxy, that's scary. That's a scary thought imagine for life. Imagine that. Imagine a team of fo- team. Foxes. Who, who's the worst trainer at Wakey? Who's the worst one? <laughs> I'd sooner answer the worst trainer I've ever had. Who's the worst trainer you've ever had? Um, Semi Tadjalala. Semi? He's ripped to death as well. Body like Adonis, the mental capacity of a gnat. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Uh, I don't know, he just couldn't hack it. Uh, Marvellous physique, chiselled. Uh, anybody would die for his physique. Just like but me. he could collapse from changing rooms to training field. <laughs> he was that tired. Give us a talk through your journey because um, I was speaking to, I can't remember his name now, he's, he's like one of the top brass at Bradford the other day and he was saying your dad were a great player. And he was he just like you, dry guy, but really good bloke. And he said that you went on to play a bit. He said you weren't the best player. That's what he said. That's what, yeah. he, said. That's what he said. I think my dad were a good player. Yeah. Uh, my brother were a good player. And there were me. <laughs> and, and there was me. But you know what I mean? You, 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 you played. You got further than me. Yeah, so, I played. And definitely further than Josh. Played far <laughs> more games than many people. And what happened? So <laughs> did, you, did, you, did, you like, did you like playing or do you prefer what you do now? Uh, I prefer what I'm doing now because I wasn't very good at playing. <laughs> Basically, I wasn't good enough. So I got the poison chalice early doors. When I was 18, I made the 18 captain. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> so you know your career's ended at 18. <laughs> so I just started looking for jobs straight away. <laughs> That's that, that was the old uh, David Renshaw, wasn't it, at Leeds, Keefe? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. He was uh, well known for that. Uh I knew we got the captaincy of the academy, but thankfully Phil Dare, uh, PD, Phil Dare, uh, Paul Dare, sorry, he said to me, he said, uh, I don't think you're going to be playing, so I'm not going to give you the captaincy, which was uh, which is a good bit of positive, but that was a good thing about the second team. We had some good, experienced, older players, so at 18 to get the captaincy, he must, he must have seen he was for, for the long haul. <laughs> <laughs> now I've always had pr- plenty of aggression. I've just, just fired into everybody. <laughs> I've always been an angry little man. <laughs> Keithy, do you want to just uh, talk us through a bit of news from this week? You, you prepared for us? Because uh, Tudor wasn't going to do. Uh, obviously, we all knew that. So now uh, you've got some tunes done for us. We have, yes. And you see, if we'd have read the script, then we would have been doing it in between the games. Yes, I'm right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I did actually glance at the script, but every week it's always the same. So I just thought, oh, well, tell you, we're doing game reviews first. <laughs> Game reviews. But you, you spent time doing the game reviews this week. You, you, you come in and you went, it's the greatest to do game reviews. Well, like we said, we critis- I, I had a little criticism at Jones the other week and he, he raised his game. Uh, he started recording them and uh, they were very entertaining. So I said to him, I'd help him out because you, you don't realise how long it actually takes. So I had a, I had a stab at it this week and I did three, Jones he did four. And uh, it, takes a fair, it takes a fair few hours. Obviously, you've got to watch the games that you can watch. Uh, and also recording it, but it's amazing how many times you mess up. So it's re-record, 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 and uh, I think <laughs> how I think it take it you through three game reviews. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but remember, you've got to watch the game as well. You've got to take stuff in, and you've got to you've got to try and put, yeah. put the put the game across. Uh, feel as though they're watching the game. <laughs> I, I love your passion, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Never seen this kind of passion from you before. <laughs> Jonesy raised the bar, so I, I I thought he did them all last week, so I said to him I'd do a few for him this week. So so I had a go at three, he did four. I did one of them in the car park at Kirkstall today at work. So uh, it's just finding don't, don't time. Don't tell Gary. I'll be off the timesheet. <laughs> <But, nah. laughs> I think we should, what we should do is we should review their reviews. Good idea. Great idea. Go on then. All 16, Wigan 44. Ready. All of Wigan were intrinsically linked on my travels this weekend, just gone strangely enough. First on Friday night, I was at a church in Kirk Hill, just five miles outside of Hull, with a lot of Hull FC fans there speaking at a church and giving a testimony. 
On the drive home, I listened to some disillusioned LFC fans who weren't impressed with their team's latest performance and got the distinct feeling that the pressure is mounting at the KC Stadium. The next day, I walked the Yorkshire Three Peaks with my wife, nine hours, 11 minutes in case you're interested, and I bumped into a big group of Wigan supporters courageously tackling the rain-sodden peaks to raise money for Johnny and Jack. Fantastic effort for a great cause. Sean Wade said it was the best win of the season for his young and largely British Wigan squad, and you only have to look at the stats to see that Wigan's 16 breaks to Hulls 2 for the match to know that Wigan were at their best. Sargison scored the first of his three tries on seven minutes after a Gellin charge down, and Gellin contributed again eight minutes later when he scored Wigan's second try, both of which were converted by Matty Smith to give Wigan a 12-point lead. Smith kicked a penalty goal to put the visitors 14-0 up, but captain Gareth Ellis led by example and gave the disgruntled old FC faithful something to hope for when he scored off the back of a Menfredi error to bring Hull back into the game. Back rower Sean Lachlan and Liam Farrell both missed this game, but the strength and depth of the Wigan team showed when Matty Smith's break sent Jack Hughes in for Wigan's third and Smith's fourth successful kick at goal made Wigan 20 points to six leaders at half-time. You felt that all needed to score the next try for a chance to compete in this game, but Wigan scored two tries right after the break. McClorum and Gellin's quick hands allowed Burgess in for the first before Sargisson stormed in for his second all inside 11 minutes. In contrast to Aaron Eremeyer leaving at the end of the season, Jamie Shaw's five-year deal was celebrated with a try following a rare Wigan error. But Wigan finished with the young guns blazing as Manfredi scored, Gellin got his second Super Combo! And Sargisson wrapped up an outstanding personal performance with his third try of the night. Hull got a consolation try through Talanoa, but a, to quote Lee Radford, Hull were by then in a rut and desperate to find answers going into this magic weekend derby against Hull KR this week. Big derby this week, Hull KR versus Hull. It's, do, you, do you reckon that's the best, Ty, what do you think, do you reckon that's the best derby in rugby league? Hull KR Hull? I reckon so, both. <laughs> 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 Both from the same city, stone throw away from each other. Why Keith, not? what do you reckon the best derbies in rugby league? I th- I th- definitely from watching the last OKR, whole OKR derby, I thought it was immense, uh, absolutely great spectacle for the game, and and you can see that the absolute the passion there and they hate each other. Uh, you know, it's, it's the Bradford Leeds derby is obviously nowhere near what nah. it was. Wigan Saints is still a big one. You know, so but you'd have to. I I definitely think the whole derby is the biggest at the moment. I think I think Cast Leeds is up there. They hate each. They, the fans hate Leeds, though. They full on hate. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. What's that? Def- yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It was always always tough to go. It to sounded Cass like Paul Wood then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Farmer, yeah, it's, uh, it's always tough to go to Cass, and uh, they definitely always raise the game uh, for that game because it was it was right there their final. Uh, you know they didn't they didn't they weren't bothered about where they finished just as long as they beat Leeds at the, at the stadium. Um, Hull have had an interesting season. Um, Jamie Shaw signed a new five year de- deal this week. You've come up against him recently, Kermo. Is he a good? Is he a good little player? Yeah, he's uh, he's like lightning. Um, obviously, he's. Just coming to the team this year, we played him on his. I think it was his debut last year, and uh, he scored two tries against us that day. Like so, it's it's good for all to tie the young English players down. I think. Yeah, they've got they've got a few good young players in Crooks and Lineham and stuff. So there's a lot of hope there. But Keefe, Radders, what 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 what, what do you make of Radders this year? Yeah, my youngest coach in Super League, uh, taking over, and uh, he's under a lot of pressure. You know him better than anybody, Coggy. You had him at Bradford. Yeah, I had him when he was a young player, actually. Uh, <laughs> Radders is a character. He was one of them players that everybody wanted to play with. Tough, uncompromising, uh, always spinning plates, all the try- always trying to earn a quid uh, outside of the game. <laughs> uh, you know, typical uh, chav. <laughs> uh, what a top bloke. <laughs> you know, it's, it's one of them. No, no, honestly. <laughs> I'm abusing, but I'll say what a great bloke he is. He can come round to my house for a coffee any time, <laughs> as long as there's nobody in. <laughs> is it, you got a lot of common, you two. You start with a negative. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, we're going to get on with playing a few tunes. Um, I hope Ty's picked some good music tonight. Um, are we, we going to pick one of the lads' tunes today? Yeah, we can do. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to do two things at once here because Chew Dog's not in. It does actually do something I've just realised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll go with uh, Clogger's tune if you want, first off. All right, and well, uh, Clogger, what's the story behind this tune? We're going to play the... He, he picked a few tunes, so we're going to play the Black Eyed Peas' Where Is The Love. <laughs> Where is it, Clogger? <laughs> well, when I were at Bradford and we were actually winning things, uh, I used to listen out for the... Lads won't believe this, a bit gay, really. <laughs> uh, I used to listen out for this song when we were travelling to games, and whenever I heard it, I used to think, ooh, we'll win today. <laughs> <laughs> are, are, are you superstitious? Are you superstitious? Not sir? at all. What? And I get on to people for that. So what's the, uh, it's what's a great the, confession. What's the weirdest superstition you've ever seen from a lad? Uh, <laughs> I've seen loads of things. Uh, different sock or, you know, put the... Uh, diff- the left foot on before the right, leave your boots while last, just all different things. As daft as that seems, some just put the socks and the boots on and walk around in, in their undies. But it's all different things, really. And what about what do you make of Bradford? Obviously, they've sorted upstairs out now. Matt Green's coming, got a few quid. Hopefully, the club's secure and <coughs> it's you know, they're gonna if they get points back, it'll at least make things interesting this season. What do you think? What, is it? It's obviously going to be really tough if they do it go, end up going down. From someone who were there in the glory days, how does it make you feel from from a club point of view? I've got a soft spot for Bradford, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I wish him well. We're on video. Uh, yeah, I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I wish him well. Uh, as long as they don't finish above us, uh, you know, I wish him well. Right, we're going to play in June. And uh, you see your winner's tune, so this is uh, Where's the Love? 